Hello everybody, I'd like to welcome you to this quick little video where I'm working with epoxy sculpt for the first time. I'm going to be mixing up a little bit of it and making some tusks for an elephant project that I'm working on. So this is sort of part 8 to that video and it's sort of just you know, my first experience with this clay in general. Please excuse the audio. I'm having serious problems in the audio department. Uh, this is pretty much Frankenstein together. Uh, it probably won't make a lick of sense. But anyhow, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to be working exclusively with Epoxy Sculpt. It's a Part A, Part B sculpting compound. Uh, this is to replace that repair putty that I used to use. I used to get at Walmart from Loctite. Uh, this is more professional, and I'm really looking forward to using this. So let's open this up and look at it. I chose to order the one pound little package they have which are two 8 ounce containers. Uh, this is roughly $24, $25. So it's it's about twice as expensive as polymer clay as far as cost. Let's take a look at the actual stuff inside. Here, let's take a look at what it says on the container. It says superior details. 0% shrinkage, highly adhesive, hard and durable, non-flammable, freeze thaw stable, 12 vibrant colors, and it gives you their website. And here's your, what it says on there. And that's the front of it. There's more instructions on this one. And then there's the work time windows. 30 minutes, it's sticky and most adhesive. One to two hours, easy to work with. Two to three hours, setting up formable detail. And it's completely cured in 24 hours. So it seems I have at least maybe three or maybe even four hours or more to work with the material. It'll just get firmer as I go. Okay, I don't have any gloves on me right now. I probably should use gloves for this, but I'm going to get me two equal amounts of this. Enough to where I, I feel like I could finish this project. Well, it certainly feels like clay. This is my first experience, um, you know, using this, so I'm very curious about it. Trying to form an equal amount here. That looks to be it. And that should give me an overall amount where I can make a couple tusks. Okay, and I'm going to thoroughly mix it up. Let's see how white this stuff gets. There's also one that says super white that you can order. So I think it would be kind of cool picking up all the colors of this and then trying to make some kind of project out of it. I can feel it heating up slightly. And it is making a mess on my fingers. So while this is setting up, I'm going to go wash my hands. Scrub them with some Brillo pads, most likely. So let me go wash my nasty fingers. Now I'm creating a form for these, for my little epoxy snakes I'm going to be making to rest on so they can harden and take that shape. Really all I'm doing is I'm making a cylinder out of polymer clay, making sure it's kind of consistent as far as, it, as, far as round, so I can then cut it down the center with my little palette knife here. I'm trying to make two equal pieces so I can be sure that I'm having a consistency, you know, from one piece to the other. I want them to be kind of symmetrical. I then later decided that they were too high up in the air, so I wanted to flatten them out a little bit. Uh, really what I was shooting for was an oblong or a, like an oblong shape instead of a cylinder. 
so I got these things flattened out a little bit more you see how they're shaped just to give the more of a gradual curvature of the tusks to match the really what I should be doing is matching the angle of the trunk that I just made I'm not sure if I'm doing that right now because that's in another room it'll be a surprise so this has been it's been about 30 minutes it still seems a little too loose to be working with because I actually tried to make these already and wound up just I'm gonna wind up just deleting those scenes because it was too soon to work with this this seems a little better roll it out like a snake we have a tiny little log consistently cut down the middle I know I can get these started though Cut that way as they set up I can just keep rolling them but I want even amounts of clay seems pretty even and I'm going to roll this into like a a point like a, a tusk they're basically cylinders that gradually taper to a point not they're not really sharp they're more of a blunt but like a tooth or a fang to maybe a cat or something you'd want to go pretty sharp I do not know how durable this stuff is so I'll try to make a little one that's sharp and make it do a durability test maybe after it's cured so that looks pretty good right there size wise this still seems way too loose just the way it's reacting it needs more time to set up so I might be doing this again the difference between simple and dynamic what I'm shooting at here is whenever you're using a flat surface like this two-dimensional surface and you lay your 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 tusk or your tooth or whatever it is down and you give your curve that you want that's a simple that's a simple item you can even do something like this like multiple curves like that this is still way too wet by the way this this epo epoxy but this is just what I would call simple where it becomes dynamic is if I take it like this and I curve it down like that and then come over I have a weird thing going on here that cannot be achieved using a flat two-dimensional plane surface so that's how that's my angle right here as far as making things simple and dynamic you can even make smaller versions of these and attach it right here and bring it up another one another piece like right here eat and make like an antler the beginning of an antler antlers you just have to be you just you just have to be sure that you can mimic the system you build be able to mimic for both sets like this right here it would be I would set this right here and try to copy what I did right there which would be something like that maybe so this is pretty much my idea right here okay for this next part I'm um, texturing this little spare piece I wanted to try texturing it and I'm painting on petroleum jelly I think I was supposed to just dab the tools into the petroleum jelly though and I'm making marks with this dentist pick running it down the length of it I'm trying to be careful not to spin spin it spiral it just yet uh, it's easier just to make all the marks first and then if you want it to spiral you can twist it you know later on the tusks I made are smooth so I didn't need to do any of this I'll be sanding it in the next part
Then you just position it how you want. If you want it to be, if you want the line to be straight, or if you want them to spiral. Okay, for the last part, all, all I'm doing is I'm I'm gonna sand these very very lightly. Uh, where it was sitting on the clay, it makes like a flat area, and how much it does that depends on how long you wait for it to set up. Like if you, if you don't wait very long, if you if you go too soon, it'll sag and not hold its round shape. Uh, the trick is to just let it set up pretty decent to where it feels like good clay. This is 150 grit sandpaper I'm using. I'm just working one area at a time, kind of rotating it and just pulling it back and forth on it. Uh, it's real easy to identify the low areas on something like this because it'll be a darker, like a shadowy look. Whereas everything else is brighter from sanding it. It brightens up. These did brighten up a lot. This is exposing the clay a lot better. And because I wanted these tusks to be, you know, smooth, I didn't I didn't really care to be texturing them or anything. That's why I'm text you know, sanding these. I want them to look pretty decent. But I found them to be really, really strong. This this material feels real strong. I felt myself getting braver and braver as I went, you know, getting rougher with it and it held up. Okay, here they are, together. One sanded and one's not. I'm pretty sure you can tell which one's sanded. It turned a little wider. There is no lines or flat surfaces on there from where it was sitting, like there is on this one. So did it really need it? No, it didn't need it. But did it look better? Yes, I think it looks a little better. So there you have it. These are my tusks for the elephant that I'm making, which in the next video I'll be doing, I'll install these and make the mouth and hopefully the ears. So that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you guys for taking the time to tune in, for checking this out. And until next time, I will see you here again soon. Thank you so much for watching.